As far as preparation is concerned, there are three important buckets. The first one being applicability. One has to assess the applicability of the statute. The second one being what is the means or basis of processing that is being used. And finally, what are the duties of that data fiduciary? So coming to the applicability part, it applies to all digital personal data and not just sensitive personal data. So what it means is the applicability is much wider than the previous rules under the IT Act. Secondly, the territorial jurisdiction covers both where uh, data is being processed of a data principle within the territory of India as well as processing taking place outside India as long as it relates to selling of goods or services to data principles in India. Finally, it does not apply to personal data which is available for domestic processing or personal data which is available in public domain uh, made by the data principal or any other person authorized under law. One has to also ascertain whether it is a data fiduciary which is significant, which is SDF and if that is the case then additional burden will apply. Those parameters of determination will are not notified yet and will have to be seen as and when it comes. And finally, if uh, data of children is being processed, if there is digital data or personal data of children, then one has to be more cautious and additional burden or duties will apply. Coming to the second bucket, which is ascertaining the basis of processing, I think uh, it is very important to know what is the basis being deployed by each data fiduciary. The first basis is consent and the second is legitimate use one has to ascertain which is the basis that a particular data fiduciary is using for different sets of uh, personal data that it may process. Uh, now within consent, what it means is that there should be a notice given either accompanied with consent or prior to consent that explains certain basic requirements of how the personal data will be dealt by that data fiduciary. So the notice should explain the purpose and uh, the type of data being processed, what is a grievance redressal mechanism, how can the consent be withdrawn, so on and so forth. Finally, this notice has to be not only in English language but also languages that are specified in 8th schedule to the Constitution of India. Again, it is very important that the data fiduciary is able to prove that this consent notice was given because if it is unable to prove, then this basis will not be acceptable and therefore it is important to deploy a verifiable means when, when using this particular basis of processing. Legitimate use again is a very prescriptive section. It culls out various examples, for example, like uh, medical emergency or medical treatment in case of disaster when processing can be undertaken. But one of the uh, bases which will be mostly used by private data fiduciaries will be where data principles have voluntarily given their data for processing for specified purpose. So again, this is an important one and one has to ascertain in its own situation how this is applicable. Coming to the third bucket related to understanding the obligations or duties of data fiduciary, I think first of all, one must understand that all the requirements under the statute are applicable on the data fiduciary and therefore they are responsible to adhering to it. Even if they are appointing a data processor for specific processing, there should be a valid contract and correct responsibilities must flow down to the data processor as well because ultimate responsibility lies with data fiduciary. The data that it has should be complete, accurate and consistent. Uh, a data fiduciary should implement uh, security measures as well as uh, have technical and organizational means to protect the uh, uh, data that it has. Uh, any breach of uh, uh, personal data again is to be reported to the board as well as to the individuals or data principals who are impacted. Erasure of data is also required in certain cases depending on the means that was deployed for uh, processing in the first place. And finally, the contact information for sending any queries needs to be published. A proper grievance redressal mechanism needs to be established. Finally, data should not be sent by data fiduciary to any country featuring in the negative list as in when the list is notified. And also there is a process of voluntary undertaking which can be utilized by a data fiduciary in case of any non adherence or non compliance with the requirements of the legislation. Uh, by agreeing to a voluntary uh, undertaking scheme with the board on certain terms and conditions. Thank you for watching this video.